Almost every interactive app sends event-driven email on a per-user basis. In today's video, we'll look at the fundamentals of transactional email. You've got mail. We'll look at strategies for sending email at the right time to increase user engagement, and of course, the technical implementation details with Firebase Cloud Functions and the SendGrid transactional email API. And this is also the first video in a new series called Minimum Viable Product, where we start with a generic spec or requirement like how do I send email from my app, then build a full stack solution with multiple front end or back end approaches. In this tutorial, you'll see the back end integration with cloud functions, but if you want to extend it, you can go to Fireship.io and see integrations for Angular, React, Vue, Svelte, and Flutter. If you're new here, like and subscribe and leave a comment below for a chance to win this t-shirt. Now, the great thing about serverless functions is that they make it really easy to implement secure event-driven code. Today, we'll write and deploy four different cloud functions, each solving a specific problem. The first one will send a welcome email when a new user signs up. The second one is an HTTP function that can be called dynamically from your front-end code. The third one is a Firestore function, which runs in response to changes to the database. And the fourth function is scheduled, which allows you to send an email at a specific time or date. We'll talk about these strategies in a little more detail as we go along, but let's get started with the initial setup. The first thing you'll need is a SendGrid account, which is a paid service, but starts off with a free tier to get you started. Now you'll see a lot of different things on the SendGrid dashboard, but the thing we're interested in is the transactional templates page. From this page, you'll want to create a new template and then add a version to it. You can use your own custom HTML, or you can go to their drag and drop editor. But when it comes to dynamic transactional email, you'll basically want to create a template that allows you to pass in a bunch of data to customize it on a per user basis. And SendGrid uses handlebars to achieve this in their templates. You'll notice over here on the left that we have the subject wrapped in handlebars. That's because we'll be dynamically passing the subject from our backend functions. Then in the email body, we have hello handlebars name, which will be passed in dynamically as well. And then also the text of the email itself. After you've created a template, make a note of the template ID. We're going to need that template ID as well as our SendGrid API key. To get the API key, we go down here to settings, and then we'll generate a new API key that is restricted to the mail send API because we don't really need anything else for this demo. From there, you can go into a blank project in your editor, or in my case, I'm working from a mono repo that has multiple front end integrations. From the command line, you can run Firebase init functions, and we'll be using TypeScript, but that part's optional. That's going to create a functions directory in the root of the project. So we'll go ahead and CD into the functions directory, then run npm install sendgrid slash mail. And that gives us the official node SDK for sendgrid. From there, we need to tell the Firebase functions environment, the sendgrid API key, and then also the template ID that we'll use to send emails. You don't have to save the template ID here, but it is useful if you just want to swap it out without having to completely redeploy your functions. So now that we can securely access the API key, we can go into the source code in the index.ts file and initialize the SendGrid SDK. We'll also bring in Firebase admin and then make a reference to the Firestore database because one of our email triggers will be on a database write. After importing SendGrid, the first thing you'll wanna do is reference your API key from the environment as well as the template ID if you saved it there. Then all you have to do is call SendGrid set API key and you're ready to start sending mail. The first type of transactional email that we'll tackle is a welcome email. This strategy is really straightforward. A new user signs up for the app and you want to send them an email with some account details and some instructions on how to get started with the app. We can handle this with the onCreate hook for Firebase Auth. When a new user signs up, this will give us the user object, which we can then pass off to the SendGrid SDK to send an email. In the function body, we'll first format the message payload. The to property is the email address that we'll be sending to, and you can add multiple email addresses here if you format it as an array. The next option is the from email, which in our case will always be hello at Fireship.io. Then we'll make a reference to the template we created in SendGrid based on its template ID. Then we have a dynamic template data option, which will take any customized data that we want to pass to SendGrid. And this data will be replaced wherever we used handlebars in the template itself which in our case is the subject line and also the name in the email body. And the final step is to return a promise from the function that sends the email, which we can do by simply returning the send grid mail send with the message as the argument. And that's all it takes to send a user a welcome email. Now that's great for that specific use case, but there may be times when you just want to send a regular HTTP call that validates that the user's logged in and then send an email to that user. And that's when callable HTTP functions from Firebase become very useful. This type of function would allow a user to simply click a button and then we could send some dynamic data to the backend from our front end code, which could be anything. 
Now you probably don't just want any user to be able to do this. You wanna make sure that it's a logged in user that has a validated email. When this function is called, we'll have the auth context from the front end. So we can check to make sure that that auth context is present and that it also has an email address on the token before we send the request to SendGrid. Now you'll notice that the callable function also has a data object in the payload. This data can be passed from the front end. Again, that data can be anything you want from your front end code. And again, head over to Fireship.io to see how the actual front end integrations look in your framework of choice. Now, if you create a callable function or just a regular HTTP function, you'll want to make sure that the response you send back is serializable to JSON. That means you don't just want to return the send grid promise, but instead await it and then return an object that says success true. And then you could handle errors here if anything goes wrong. So that gives you a really flexible way to manually send email from your front end, but you may want your functions to automatically react to changes to your database. For example, you might have a blog app and the author of a blog might want to be notified when a user comments on their post. And the database will have a collection of posts and then we'll have a sub collection of comments nested under each post. So this function will run whenever a new comment is added to that sub collection. This function will automatically give us access to the comment document, but it won't give us access to the post. It will only give us the post ID. So what we need to do is make a reference to that post in the database, and then we'll call git to retrieve its actual data. Now, if you're in TypeScript strict mode, you might also want to say or an empty object just to prevent errors from the TypeScript compiler. Or you can set strict null checks to false in your TS config. But now that we have the necessary data, we can then format the message. We can use all this dynamic data to create a custom subject line, and then we can also set the post text to something like, this user said something about this post. And that gives us a function that can send transactional email based on changes to the database. And that tends to be a lot more simple than trying to send requests from your front end code. Now at this point, we've only been sending email based on user-driven events. But what if we have something a little more static, like a weekly summary that we want to send to each user? For that, we can use a pub sub function based on a schedule. For example, every Friday at 0500. From there, we can make a query to Firestore for all of the users that are ready to receive the summary. That query is going to give us an array of snapshots, so we'll go ahead and map those snapshots down to the actual email on each document. And that will just give us an array of strings or email addresses that we can send to SendGrid. From there, you can use your own business logic to calculate the weekly summary, and then we'll return a promise to send the emails just like we've done in all the other functions. Now, in order to start testing these functions out, we need to run Firebase deploy only functions, and they'll be ready for use in a front-end application. You can test the Firestore or auth functions by simply going into the Firebase console and creating new authentication records or Firestore documents in the appropriate places. And if you're ready to integrate this with a front-end framework, head over to Fireship.io to check out the full source code and the framework-specific videos. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.